Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, we will be seeing how fast Garchomp can beat Pokemon Heart Gold in a solo run. Let's get straight into the video. I'm honestly really looking forward to doing this because the last video I have edited for Pokemon Heart Gold was all the way back a year ago with Tyranitar, but then again there was that three-way race in December, but let's just say this is my first time in over a year doing a solo Pokemon Heart Gold video. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, especially since I've now changed my methodology for ranking these runs. You will guys will see it later in the video. So anyway, while we're going through the early routes, why don't we talk about exactly what we're dealing with. You may know that Garchomp is very powerful, mainly because Cynthia uses it, and she is very terrifying to new players. And you can definitely see that in the moveset. We start off with Dragon Rage, Sand Attack, Sandstorm, and Tackle. Our level 1 move can also have Fire Fang, but it's only by Move Relearner, so we would need a Heart Scale for that. But if we take a look at the level up set right here, our next move is level 15 where we get Takedown, and then Sand Tomb, Slash, Dragon Claw, Dig, Crunch, and Dragon Rush. So yeah, a e decent selection of moves. I'm honestly surprised this thing doesn't get Earthquake by level up. I kind of thought it did. And also, we are using a pseudo-legendary, because our base stat total is 600. We have 108 HP, 130 attack, 95 defense, 80 special attack, 85 special defense, and 102 speed. To be honest, 102 speed is enough for pretty much everything in the game, mainly because of the slow level up curve in Johto. You really don't see many fast Pokemon until you pretty much get to red, so I'm really not too worried. But also, we get a decent selection of TM moves. The main notable ones are Dragon Claw, Hidden Power, which in this game is always special, so we will probably not use it. Hyper Beam, Iron Tail, Earthquake, Return, Dig, Brick Break, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Rock Tomb, Aerial Ace, Facade, Secret Power, Dragon Pulse, Shadow Claw, Giga Impact, Stone Edge, Rock Slide, and Poison Jab. So yeah, we get a decent variety of coverage moves, so it's going to be quite interesting doing this run. So now with all that information out of the way, let's continue on with the run. You guys also may have noticed this, but unlike my previous Heart Gold videos with Tyranitar and the three-way versus video with the Johto starters in December, I now have full functioning game hook overlay with Heart Gold. What this means is now you can finally see all of my edited stuff. What this means is that now you guys can see the enemy Pokemon stats, you can see my moveset update in real time, the power points, my stats, friendship, vitamins, held items, and the game time. If you guys are wondering why the game time kind of looks off compared to the real time, we have not found where the milliseconds are kept in the game's memory, so we don't have milliseconds, we just have seconds, minutes, and hours, so yeah, that's just something you're gonna have to deal with. And also, I have a new feature on my overlays, I'm gonna try and get this into every single one, but if you can see in the bottom, there is a money and a coins counter. I will now be able to see how much money I have and how many coins I have, which will definitely help in this run because we are allowed to use the game corner. In this game, you cannot purchase coins with money, but you have to actually play the game. But to kind of make it fair, I allow myself to play the game, but I have to use save states while playing. I know some people would either just skip the game corner or just hack in all of the coins, but I really don't think that's in spirit of the run. But anyway, as you guys were probably seeing in the background, Garchomp really does not struggle with anything early game. I'm sure that was predictable because we're a fully evolved Pokemon. So why don't we skip straight ahead to Faulkner and see what he's like. He leads off with a Pidgey, which one-shots with Dragon Rage, and then the Pidgeotto has exactly 40 HP, so one Dragon Rage takes care of it, so... Yep, that was a complete and utter sweep. And then I can go to the Pokemon Mart, get the egg for later, and then I can buy some potions, repels, antidotes, stuff like that. I head all the way down to the Union Cave, and I heal at the center here because I didn't heal at the center back in Violet City. And then I go down this set of stairs right here, and I get the TM for Rock Tomb, which I teach in the place of Sandstorm. The reason I want Rock Tomb is mainly to help out with Bugsy, especially since his Scyther is four times weak to Rock. And to be honest, there's really nothing good from here until Bugsy, so let's just skip straight to him. He leads off with Scyther, and then I try to go for Rock Tomb, but it outspeeds and uses U-Turn, so I end up hitting the Metapod. 
I do eventually knock out his Scyther, but then unfortunately, his Kakuna actually poisons me so I die, and I didn't save before this fight because I was that confident I would win, so I end up all the way back at the Pokemon Center outside of Union Cave, so I end up having to go through the cave to go back to Bugsy and try again. Okay, that was pretty stupid. In the next attempt, when Scyther did not use a turn 1 U-turn, I completely destroy his entire team. See, this is what I was thinking of an easy Bugsy. I did not expect that. And then next up, we have to fight Rival 2. He has a Ghastly, Zubat, and a Quilava. But it's not gonna matter. The Zubat and the Ghastly have less than 40 HP, and the Quilava can just get one shot with Rock Tomb, so he's a pretty easy fight here. And then I go in the Ilex Forest, return these kids Farfetch, and then I can get the HM for Cut. There are generally some useful hidden items here in Pokemon Crystal, but there's really not any useful ones in Heart Gold to my knowledge, so I just skip them. Although I do talk to this guy and get the move Headbutt taught to Garchomp, just because Headbutt's gonna be way better than Tackle. But you know what's something I really do not like about Headbutt? I keep talking to every tree while holding the turbo button, and then I can end up headbutting a tree or something like that. Like, it's really annoying. And also at this point, you can actually see me doing the game corner. You can't see me actually playing the game because the game is on the bottom screen, and I always show the top screen in my runs. I might consider for future runs, maybe recording the bottom screen in a separate OBS scene or something, just so I can paste it above the gameplay, but oh well, it's not like it's gonna matter, I'm just gonna skip over this. If you guys are wondering what I need from the game corner, it's quite simple. I get three items. I get the TM for Swords Dance, the TM for Substitute just in case, and I also get the Silk Scarf. The Silk Scarf will boost my normal moves by 20%. So it combined with Headbutt and Takedown later is going to be really good. And also, you may notice my coin counter says 69,137. Uh, this was a problem with Gamehook at the time. I didn't know what was wrong with it, but I can reassure you for the second playthrough, it was fixed. The main problem was, was that in the game's memory, with the money for example, it's kept in a 4-byte integer, which is a series of 4 bytes that tell me how much money I have. The coins are only kept in 2 bytes of data, but in Gamehook it's listed out as 4 bytes, so it's probably reading bytes that it's not supposed to. But I did get it fixed, so you'll just have to ignore that for now. I then go in the underground to feed a bunch of trainers, and then I get the Kenya, the bicycle, and then I can solve the quiz, get the radio card, and then I can take on the third gym leader, Whitney. She leads off with a Clefairy. I start off with a turn 1 Swords Dance, and I use one more, but funnily enough, the Clefairy here has Mimic, and it actually stole my Swords Dance, but I mean, what's it gonna do, Swords Dance Double Slap? I pretty much just ignore the problem, and then I just completely destroy Whitney's team. Man, Garchomp is an absolute powerhouse so far. You may think it was because I got the TM for Swords Dance early, but then again, it's in the game corner. If you wanted to, you could actually grind here for Swords Dance as early as Gym 3 so I'm perfectly cool with it. I then fight a bunch of trainers leading up to the pseudo widow tree, I make it run away, and then I talk to this guy to get the HM for Rock Smash, which I teach to Togepi. The main reason I need Rock Smash is so I can go in the ruins of Alf, destroy this one rock here, and get a rare candy. I can also use Rock Smash to get shards for berries later if I need to, but I just need the rare candy for now. And with that stuff obtained, I am now in Ecruteak City. I go over here to get the TM for Shadow Claw, which I will be using for Morty, and then I can go inside the Kimono Girl Dance Theater, get the HM for Surf, and then go in the Burn Tower to take on the rival. He leads off with Ghastly, and I start off by using one Swords Dance, which was absolutely not a good idea, because it turn one uses a curse, and even if I one-shot everything from here, there is no way I'm gonna live, and then when I get to the Magnemite, I use Headbutt, and I knock it out? Huh. I for certain thought I was gonna die here, but hey, I'll take it. I didn't get punished for playing like an idiot. And now that the Johto Beasts are roaming free, I can dig out of here, and then with my newly obtained Shadow Claw, I can go take on Morty. He leads off with a Ghastly, one Shadow Claw knocks it out, obviously. Next up is his Gengar. It uses Sucker Punch, but it doesn't matter, one Shadow Claw knocks it out. 
and if it knocks out the Gengar, it'll obviously one-shot both of his Haunters. So yeah, it's a really good thing they put Shadow Claw right by the Mount Mortar on the Ecruteek side. They put that there on purpose to help you with Morty. I do like that they did that. So now I go through routes 38 and 39 and make my way to Olivine City. There are a few errands I need to do here. I go ahead and get a good rod to catch a Krabby for later, because the Krabby will be used for Surf, Strength, and Whirlpool. I do go to the Pokemart here to get some Super Repels, as well as some extra Pokeballs just in case, and then I go fishing for the Krabby. It does take me a few tries, which was pretty unlucky. I even found a Corsola before a Krabby. I did not know you could find Corsola with the Good Rod, but hey, you learn something new every day. And then with my Krabby obtained, I go through the entire lighthouse, make my way up to Jasmine, and now I have to go to Sianwood City. Unfortunately, when I was on my way up to her, I ended up blacking out on a random trainer because I was running out of headbutts and then this guy here had a bunch of Pidgeys and I had no move to attack his Pokemon with so I ended up blacking out all the way back to Ecruteek but I do end up getting to Jasmine sooner or later. But man, two blackouts? That is just not looking good. So now that I am in Sianwood City, I can go get the secret potion and then before I go back, I'm obviously going to take on the gym leader Chuck. So let's get this show on the road, brother. He leads off with his Primeape. The worst moves this thing has is Rock Slide and Double Team, but I knock it out after a couple of slashes. And now next up is his Polyrath. A terrifying combo it can do is Hypnosis into Focus Punch. Fortunately, it tried to focus punch when I was underground, so my dig just made it lose its focus. And I end up winning on the first try. Nice. And now with Chuck defeated, I get the HM for fly, and at this point I can go return the secret potion, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm actually going to head east from Ecruteek over to Mahogany and up to the Lake of Rage. There are plenty of decent trainers to fight for experience, which is very helpful when you remember that I am in the slow leveling group. That is a very bad level up group for solo runs. Also, I forgot to mention this when I was buying stuff at the game corner. I actually have the held item metronome. It only costs a thousand coins at the game corner. And honestly, this held item's kind of underrated. What it does is whenever you use a move repetitively and it hits, it gets a 10% boost in damage every time up to 100%. This item works really good with stuff like rollout but if you're in a 5 Pokemon trainer battle and you're just planning to use one move like Slash or Return, they'll slowly get more powerful. Like a turn 3 Slash with Metronome is actually going to be better than Silk Scarf. So I actually hold on to this for a good chunk of the run. But now we're at the point where we have to go through the Rocket Hideout and do all that boring stuff. So why don't we just skip all that and go to the next gym leader. And that next gym leader is Price. He leads off with his seal, I use one sword stance and KO it with Dragon Claw, and then the Dugon goes down to Dragon Claw. I reach level 36, and despite me getting hit with an Icy Wind lowering my speed, I'm still able to outspeed everything on his team and I get my next badge. Honestly, I think fighting Price here might have been a worse idea than just fighting Jasmine, because like if that Icy Wind crit or something, then that could have been really bad, but it went fine for me. Why don't we just skip the animation and just go straight to Jasmine? She leads off with a Magnemite. I use a Swords Dance. It hits me with Super Sonic, but luckily when it's over, I just use one more Swords Dance and I use Dig. The main reason I was using all those Swords Dances is to one-shot the Steelix with its massive defense stat. And then once I one-shot the Steelix, obviously the Magnemite's going to follow down with it. And now that we've beaten Jasmine, we get that dreaded call from Professor Elm saying to go to the radio tower and fight Team Rocket. Before I do that though, I fly to Goldenrod, go south to this route right here, I get a Nugget and a Rare Candy. I like to get the Nugget here before doing the radio tower stuff, because while I'm going through the area, I will eventually go back to the department store, and I will get the TM for return, along with any vitamins I may need. So here's something different with the Radio Tower compared to Crystal. You actually have to disguise yourself as a Team Rocket member, try to sneak in. Silver basically tries to be a pervert and rips your clothes off right in front of the Rocket Grunt, ruining your plans so now you have to fight your way up. So now we have to go through the entire Radio Tower. Honestly, I'm gonna say this, 
there's not as many mandatory battles in here as there was in Pokemon Crystal. Like a lot of the trainers that were mandatory in Crystal were pretty much moved around on the floor or just became spinners which I can easily avoid. But, however, the executive Petrol is still in the director's office, and he can be hard with his five coughing and wheezing, so let's play an animation for him. He obviously leads off with his one of five coughing. I start off by using a Dragon Claw. Unfortunately, it does not one-shot like I hoped, and then I got hit with a smoke screen and poisoned. So I pretty much decided to reset the fight right away, so that became my very first reset of the run. This time, I decide instead of setting up a Swords Dance, I'm just gonna try and sweep with the same move to get the Metronome boost. I didn't know what I was doing during the first coughing and I used Slash, but then once I realized what I was doing, I switched to just one move, and Dragon Claw gets enough base power to one-shot almost everything without Swords Dance, so that's really good. And now we are going to do part 2 of the radio hideout, which involves going through the basement. But obviously in the basement, there is the rival battle, so why don't we just go see how he does. This rival fight here can be a pain sometimes, especially because of his Golbat. I use one Swords Dance on it, but it can confuse you with Confuse Ray. But luckily it doesn't, I one-shot the Golbat, the Sneasel, and I get rid of the Haunter. Then the Quilava, which is still not fully evolved yet, goes down to a Dragon Claw, and I use Dig on Magnemite for the win. I'm going to skip ahead through the rest of these rocket grunts, and then we can rescue the director, and then head up the stairs to the department store. At this point, we are going to go get the TM for return, which is why I play this game on a Sunday. And now we can buy some vitamins as well. I go ahead and sell a bunch of valuable stuff I have first to get more money, and I really like how you have tons of money by this point so I can get plenty of vitamins. And today's vitamin of the day is two carbos and four protein. My attack is pretty much gonna be the MVP stat of this whole run, and 102 speed still isn't the best, so I just buy a couple of extra carbos, but that's pretty much all the vitamins I'm really gonna need. And now that my Garchomp is all vitamined up, I clear out the rest of the radio tower, go through the ice path, and now let us go take on the final gym of Johto, Claire. She leads off with a Gyarados, which I will admit is kind of scary. I use a Swords Dance, and it just gets a pathetic Dragon Pulse, which doesn't do much. And it was a good thing I lived at 27 HP, because I realized I forgot to heal going into this fight, and that was pretty much a dumb idea. But still, I one-shot Sweep Claire, for the most part. But before she can give me her badge, I have to go straight into the Dragon's Den, solve a quiz, and then right here, I can get her badge. She also gives the TM for Dragon Pulse too, but Dragon Claw is better for this thing because of its physical attack stat, so I'm not going to bother teaching it. But as you can see right here, I'm heading my way back to the place I took the quiz. As soon as you have the 8th badge, this Elder right here will give me a Dratini. This is what I will use for Waterfall. It is kind of annoying having to backtrack for it. An alternative solution I have found is when I'm surfing to Cianwood, I'll actually catch a Tentacool, so that way I don't need to get the Dratini. But we're not done with the Johto stuff yet. In the original Crystal game, I could just go straight to the Elite Four, but obviously we're not playing Crystal version. We have to go back to Ecrutik City and go fight all of the Kimono Girls, all five of them at once, back to back. But before I do that, I just go around the region and pick up some rare candies. There are a lot of rare candies in this game. A lot of them are pretty far and spread out, but knowing that Red is at the end of this game, it is definitely worth it in the first playthrough, just getting almost all of them. The Kimono Girls here are a lot tougher than they were in Pokemon Crystal, mainly just because in this game you have to fight them at a much later level, but fortunately none of them provide a challenge. And since we're doing Heart Gold version, we have to go up the Tin Tower to meet Ho-Oh, and by meet Ho-Oh, I mean run away like a bitch. So now that we've ran away like a bitch, we can head back to New Bark Town and make our way to Victory Road. Once I enter Victory Road, there's pretty much no trainers in here at all, but there is still a couple of items I want to get. There is a rare candy in here, as well as the TM for Earthquake. However, when going through here and heading to the rival battle, I realized I forgot to get the Earthquake TM, so hopefully I go back for it. 
Anyway, the rival leads off with Sneasel, which is not a good lead because it has Icy Wind. I didn't think that the speed drop would have mattered, so I just used the Swords Dance anyway and sweep. I one-shot the Sneasel, the Golbat, the Haunter outspeeds and confuses me, which is really bad, and then now the Kadabra's out. I hit myself in confusion, it sets up a reflect, but I can move on, and I'm dead. So, uh, yeah, that was bad. Fortunately, I do win on the next attempt, and that was with two speed drops. I really should not have bothered using Swords Dance on that fight. But, oh well, we can move on. I enter the Pokemon League building, I heal at the center, and before I buy full restores, I just now realized I forgot Earthquake. So let me go get that, thank you. I go ahead and teach it in the place of Dig, and now I can buy some full restores and max repels for later, and now we can take on the final five trainers of Johto. <sighs> Let's do this shit. The first Elite Four member of Johto is Will. I lose to his Jinx very quickly due to some bad luck. The main plan is to try and set up one Swords Dance on the Zatu, but it just loves using a Confuse Ray. But fortunately, I wear out from the confusion quite quickly, and I am able to one-shot pretty much everything on his team. Next up is the Elite Four member, Koga. I use one Swords Dance on his Ariados, which really can't do much, and then his bulky Fortress goes down to one return and a Dragon Claw. Next up is the Venomoth, Dragon Claw makes it go down in one hit. The Muck, which is holding a Black Sludge, can't even heal itself back up because it dies in one shot, and the Crobat is destroyed. Alright, now we're moving on. The third Elite Four member here is Bruno. He's generally one of the more terrifying members of this league, but let's see. On his Hitmontop, its only good attacking move is Dig and Triple Kick, so I set up two Swords Dances, and I start sweeping with Earthquake. The good thing about Earthquake in this game, it was starting in Generation 2, if the opponent is underground with Dig, Earthquake will do double the damage. So it doesn't even matter if the Hitmontop tries to troll with Dig, I can just completely destroy his whole team. Next up is the 4th Elite Four member, Karen. Unlike in Crystal where she had Sand Attack, this one has Double Team. Double Team is more bearable because Sand Attack is permanent the whole fight, while Double Team is only permanent on that one Pokemon. So once I defeat the Umbreon, the rest of her team is quite easy, even though I try to use Earthquake on a Gengar like an idiot. And now that we've defeated Karen, we can now move on to the Johto Champion, Lance. He leads off with his Gyarados, I use one Sword Stance, I live in Ice Fang at around half health, and then I use a Return, and then the second Ice Fang knocks me out. Okay, I clearly see I did not play that right. On the next attempt, I use one Sword Stance, Ice Fang leaves me at 92 health, and then I try to use Dragon Claw, but nope, that does not work either. On the next attempt, I use some rare candies to get to level 53. I use two Swords Dances, and the two Ice Fangs leave me at 19 HP to spare. And now that I'm at plus three attack from that Intimidate, I can one-shot every single thing on his team, and I outspeed everything too. The Aerodactyl only has 144 speed, and look at that, I'm at 148, and the Johto section of Heart Gold is finished at around an hour and 47 minutes. That is not a bad Johto split for a HeartGold playthrough, but obviously this is not where we're ending things. Next up, we have to go through the entire Kanto Gym Leader section. Unfortunately though, most of the Gym Leaders in Kanto are very, very easy, so what I'm gonna start doing is, unless a Gym Leader actually provides a challenge, I'm just gonna skip straight ahead to blue, so we're gonna fade out and see where we meet back up. You guys may or may not believe this, but every single gym leader was a first try sweep. But now, we are about to face Blue, so let's go ahead and see how he does. He leads off with his Executor, I am level 61, I use a Swords Dance, and then it tries to use Trick Room, which basically makes slower Pokemon go first, but I began to notice something. I did notice that the Executor was just spamming Leaf Storm and making its special attack go down, 
that actually gives me an idea on how I can make this guy consistent. This may work in the future too. I go to the game corner back in Goldenrod City, I play it some more, and then I get the TM for rest. Alright, we are now back at blue at level 63. I use a Swords Dance, and then I can now use the move Rest. At this point, the Leaf Storm is doing such little damage because its only other attacking move is Psychic, but for some reason, this thing does not like to use Psychic that much. But then again, even if he uses Psychic, his special attack is still completely down the shitter. So once the Trick Room wears off, with my plus 4 attack, I can one-shot every single thing on Blue's team, and I win. Alright, that is all 16 badges. I can now go back to Professor Oak, get the HM for Rock Climb, and I can teach it to Snorlax. Which is not only my Rock Climb user, but it's also the way I get leftovers. In my old rules, I would have just gone straight to red and gotten a really, really good red time. But, this is not where we're ending the run. Remember how I said at the start of the video I changed my methodology? I am now making round two of the Elite Four mandatory before red. That way, not only it provides much more entertainment for you all, it also evens out the level curve between blue and red by slowly raising the level. Because the champion's highest level here is level 75, and then red's lowest level is level 80. So it definitely does work out nice. Plus not only that, that could be training where I might have to skip rare candies because all of the Elite Four training there will be mandatory. I go around the region though picking up some other rare candies that I need Rock Climb for, and now with all that done, I take on round two of the Elite Four, let's cut to it. I'm not doing one of those intros again, that's only for round one. Anyway, the Elite Four here all have six Pokemon, and Will leads off with a Bronzong. I set up to plus six with my Swords Dance, and I use Earthquake on it, then the Jinx goes down to one Dragon Claw, the Grumpig goes down in one shot, the Slowbro goes down in one shot, the Gardevoir goes down to one Dragon Claw, especially since the Fairy Typing didn't exist yet, and then his final Zatu is destroyed. Koga leads off with a Skunk Tank. I go ahead and use an Earthquake because that thing has Toxic, I do not want to set up on that thing. And then I use a Swords Dance on the Toxic Croak, noticed it had Swagger, so I should probably get away from that thing. And then the Crobat flies in the sky, it crits, and I get a reset. Funny, my first reset in the round 2 league is Koga. That's funny. I do get another reset because the Skunk Tank used a very early Toxic, but then after that though, I'm able to destroy his old team. But definitely one of the most improved people in round 2 is Bruno. Let me show you why. He still leads with Hitmontop, but this thing really still isn't that good. It likes to use a turn 1 counter most of the time, I just use one Swords Dance and defeat it and Hitmon Lee with Earthquake. The Hitmon Chan has very good defense, but that doesn't matter, it still does not live. And then next up is the Machamp, it goes down to an Earthquake. The Lucario is weak to Earthquake, and finally is his Hariyama. This thing is very, very bulky, and it almost lives a Dragon Claw, but thankfully it does not. So uh, that wasn't really a good example for how hard Bruno can be. If you want to see how hard he can be in round 2, Go to my Tyranitar livestream, where I replayed it with round 2. Bruno was very, very hard. And now next up is Karen. She has a very bad lead, a level 62 Weavile. I try not to set up on it because it has ice moves, which I am 4 times weak to. I go for an Earthquake, it lives in red health, so that's an indicator that I need to use some rare candies. On the next attempt, I get all the way to level 67, and still, Earthquake does not one-shot. I used candies, and it didn't make it any better. Like, what the heck, man? On the third try, I get a good range, and I can move on. She also has a Spirit Tomb. I used Swords Dance on it, which was not a good idea at all. If you want to know why, that thing has Curse. I try and use Rest to buy myself some time, but I highly doubt it's going to work, especially since I'm not holding a Chesto Berry, and I am dead. But we're not out of the woods yet. We still have Round 2 Lance. This guy is really, really hard in runs. Sometimes he's harder than Red, but let's take a look. He leads off with a level 72 Salamence with Intimidate. I go ahead and use one Swords Dance, but it outspeeds me anyway, and then it just kills me in two Dragon Claws. I can see at this point, it's barely able to outspeed me, so I use a couple of rare candies and get back into the fight. 
I am at 188 speed at level 69, and the Salamence is at, at 187. So I defeat it after a Swords Dance, and then the Garchomp right afterwards goes down to a Dragon Claw. The Altaria goes down to Dragon Claw, and then the Dragonite goes down to a Dragon Claw, and now we are back at Gyarados. The Intimidate cancels out my Swords Dance, but it doesn't matter. Dragon Claw gets a crit. And now on Charizard, I use another Swords Dance. I'm not worried about this thing hitting me with Dragon Claw or anything, because Charizard does not get stabbed from it. And besides, its special attack is better than its attack anyway. But it doesn't matter. I actually beat Round 2 Lance. I mean, it helps that I have super effective coverage on most of his Pokemon. And now, as soon as the credits roll, we can reset back to New Bark Town and head our way up Mount Silver, where we can now fight Red. You may have noticed when I was going up to red that the snow looks weird. I always play on a day that not only is a Sunday, but also gives diamond dust. I set the day to March 18th, 2020, which was the last time a Sunday fell on a diamond dust day. So that way I don't have to deal with hail for this fight, which is really, really good. Red leads off with his level 88 Pikachu. I go for a sword stance because I really don't fear anything from this thing. I also have a tract taught over rest, the main strategy on Red is to attract his Pikachu so it can't attack that much, hold the leftovers, use three Swords Dances, and with my attack stat completely maxed out, that and I can outspeed pretty much everything on this fight. I can one-shot all of Red's Pokemon, and I have beaten Pokemon Heart Gold with a real time of 2 hours, 44 minutes, and 7 seconds with 12 resets at level 72, with a game time of 7 hours and 13 minutes. That was a really, really good first playthrough, but as you all know, I do second playthroughs from now on. So now let us skip straight into the second playthrough and see what we can improve. I'm actually going to skip ahead. This is not my second playthrough. This is my third playthrough. I didn't do three full playthroughs, my second playthrough actually had way more resets and a slower time upon defeating Lance because I made a lot of screw-ups because I ended up going into fights under-leveled and I got so many resets. I pretty much decided after I was finished with Lance that I should probably do a third playthrough, so here we are. The vast majority of the early game goes pretty much the same as last time, although when I'm doing the game corner stuff in Goldenrod for the second time, I continue playing for a bit extra longer, so I can buy Swords Dance, Rest, and the Metronome. I don't bother getting Substitute since I never used it last time. Skipping all the way ahead to Claire, I still have zero resets. I have first tried every single Gym Leader and other Major Trainer. And as you notice in the bottom area of the screen, it no longer says I have like 200,000 coins. I have fixed it, so the coin amount will be correct. Although, I do have one reset at the Kimono Girls, because I think in the first playthrough, I just got really lucky. I remember in my second playthrough, which I will not show you footage for, I had like seven resets on those girls, because I was three levels under-leveled at that point. Like, I skipped too much training. I also get a reset on the rival in Victory Road again. He's just pretty tough, actually, for Garchomp, because it is not good that he leads with an Ice-type. And then after that though, I first try everybody in the league. And obviously like before, with the first seven Kanto gym leaders, I don't struggle with any of them at all. And now we can just go straight to blue. Unfortunately, I do have a couple of resets on him, mainly because the Executor wasn't cooperating, mainly just from it critting Leaf Storm and stuff like that. But after a couple of tries, I am able to get past him. So now let us go take on round two of the Elite Four yet again. I first try Will, I first try Koga, I first try Bruno, and on Karen, unfortunately due to the Weavile and Spiritomb being pains in the butt, it takes me three tries to get past her. But now we are back at Lance. I use a Swords Dance on the Salamence, it uses a Dragon Claw for a decent amount of damage, and then once I'm at plus one, I can one-shot it with Dragon Claw. At this point, I am now level 78, which was definitely a higher level than I was last time. And at this much higher of a level, I don't think I need to reset up a Swords Dance. It may have been a good idea to do so, because I noticed on the Gyarados, I did live in Ice Fang, but Dragon Claw didn't KO. It may have been worth using another one, but 
I don't know, it might have been better to just straight on attack. And then on the Charizard, its own Dragon Claw unfortunately gets a critical hit and I die on the last Pokemon. I know for a fact I would have lived that, because that Charizard does not get stabbed from Dragon Claw, so it would not have killed me, but unfortunately it did because of a crit. But still, on the next attempt, I am able to win. So now we are fighting Red with only 8 resets. I am level 79, I use a turn 1 attract on Red's Pikachu, and then I try my best to set up Swords Dances. Fortunately, this isn't Crystal where it has Charm on its moveset. Fortunately, it doesn't have that, so I can safely get to plus 6, destroy it with Earthquake, and then one-shot sweep the whole rest of his team while Leftovers slowly heal me up. And fortunately, without the hail damage, not only am I not taking subtle damage every turn, but the blizzards on the opponent's team will no longer skip accuracy checks. So then, I can defeat his Venusaur and beat Pokemon Heart Gold yet again, with a time of 2 hours, 20 minutes, and 13 seconds. With 8 resets at level 80, and a game time of 6 hours and 26 minutes. That was definitely a really, really good second playthrough. 8 resets still seems like a lot, but you gotta remember, I am including round 2 of the Heart Gold League from now on. I would do the same thing in Crystal, but there is no round 2 League, so uh, yeah, that'll have to do. You may wonder why I don't include it in other runs. I don't include in Fire Red and Leaf Green because it's after I defeat the champion, which is when I normally end the run. Kind of a similar thing with Platinum, as well as the Gen 5 games. But since my time ends at Red in the Johto games, I can get Round 2 of the Elite Four before Red. So I will fight the Round 2 League. And besides, it makes for very interesting content. So why don't we take a look at the leaderboard? I am sure this surprises no one, but Garchomp completely destroys the competition, and it gets first place overall by a gigantic margin. Plus, if you look at it, it's actually the lowest level completed, and then its second place is a tie between Miltank and Gallade. Although you have to remember, all those other runs didn't have second playthroughs yet. So I'm sure with time, they can get much better times, but I highly doubt better than Garchomp. But still, it was a lot of fun doing a Heart Gold video again, and I sure hope you all enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, and be sure to follow me on my socials or support me on YouTube memberships. Links are down below. The next video will be Pokemon Platinum. I wanted to do something challenging this time around, so I will be attempting to beat Pokemon Platinum with Mime Jr., a baby Pokemon based on Mr. Mime. So this is definitely going to be very, very interesting. I hope you all look forward to it. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.